Well, here we are, Thanksgiving Day, and uh, the big announcement. Um, actually, I didn't. It's actually going to be next Thanksgiving. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I know a lot of you are eagerly anticipating, and I know there's been a lot of guesses, some really weird ones, uh, that we're going to have a church building here. No, no, that was my neighbor hammering something. Um, a lot of people said, uh, am I going to shave my beard? Well, that isn't going to happen, so uh, definitely not going to happen. Um, am I backing off on the, on the preacher rapture? No. Am I becoming a Roman Catholic? Well, you know, the position for Pope will be coming up in 2016, according to some rumors, but... Uh, I don't think I'm going to be lining up for that position. Uh, what is it? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, just a kind of a uh, mem remembering here what the Lord has done with this ministry. Um, November of 2008 is when this started. And it is now seven years from the time that I uh, started the ministry online. I was a little bit in ministry before going online, but uh, it's been about seven years of being in ministry now, full-time in ministry, uh, serving the Lord, and I'm still absolutely shocked by what all He's done in my life. Uh, all glory that from this video, it all goes to the Lord. Uh, none of it goes to myself or to my wife. Um, it's been an amazing, amazing time. Uh, I started out this ministry by myself, and... Why did I start a ministry? Well, because I saw a book, a book that changed my life, a book that helped me to realize that I wasn't a real true Christian, um, a book that helped me to see through a lot of the systems that are out there that people just accept and uh, that really have no basis in Scripture. And, you know, I, I looked at this book and I said, okay, Lord, now that you've saved me, I'm going to dedicate my life to you and I'm going to dedicate my life to preaching and teaching this book. And uh, whatever this book says, I'm going to do it. And uh, that's why I've turned against a lot of things that many, many people accept as part of Christianity. Um, there are no church buildings in the New Testament. And I know a lot of the brethren get upset with me, but it's what the Bible teaches. You know, and I, I've been taught by a lot of great men. They say I'm a, a Bible believer in all matters of faith and practice. And then I see that they don't follow the King James Bible in practice. They do things that don't appear in Scripture, and then actually are contrary to the Scriptures. And so I determined in my heart, okay, Lord, if you're going to put me in the ministry, if if you're going to use me to preach your word, I'm going to live by it. I'm going to show the world that this book is modern, it's up to date, it's not archaic, it's not some old book that's got dust on it and that should be put on a shelf someplace. No, this book is more modern than the most recent bestseller that comes out on the New York Times bestsellers list. This is God's book, and you can live by it, you can trust it. So having said that, what's the big announcement? Well, Mutter, if you can come out. Excuse me, I don't think she heard me. Mutter. I had her in another room because I didn't, I wanted to kind of conceal the secret here until it's time to uh, reveal it. Let me read a scripture here before um, she comes on to camera. Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. So, come on in. We would like to introduce the world to our son from the Lord, Oliver James Denlinger, born September 5th of 2014. So we went a little bit longer than three months, uh, keeping the thing hidden. A lot of the sisters in Christ were wondering and saying, I bet that they're having a baby. Well, actually we had a baby. Amen. Praise and the Lord. I saw another thing that I want to kick, and this is why I said, hold on there, the, our little clock is going to be chiming, I'm not shutting the chimes off for this, but another thing that was said uh, in my video, I said that this announcement is going to change a lot of people's views about us. Well, the reason I said that is because I have been accused of not being a proper biblical preacher, a pastor, a bishop, 
according to the rules uh, set forth in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And a bishop is supposed to be the husband of one wife. So I got that put on me for a few years. Oh, you're not married. You're not married. And I'd say, what about the Apostle Paul? You know, and they'd say, yeah, but you're supposed to be married according to the standards of 1 Timothy 3. And I was like, what am I supposed to do about this? Every time I try to go out and meet a woman in the world, it just falls apart. It's not a good thing. She doesn't want to serve the Lord. So the Lord provided me with my wife. Okay. And then it was, okay, well, you're married, but now you need to have children. Well, the Lord gave us a child. And I'll say this, I'm going to just give you the quick little synopsis here, and then we're going to get into more detail. Um, we have never once, the entire time of our marriage, we have never once used birth control, ever. And no pregnancy okay. test either. Yeah, but I'm saying, that's that'll come later. But what I'm saying is, there's never been birth control. So don't say, oh, well, have you decided to have a family now? We didn't decide anything. Okay, it's all been of the Lord. And... Uh, Again, I don't want to get too far ahead of us here, but, you know, the fact is we both have very, very toxic backgrounds, uh, chemicals and things like that. Me working in the boat building industry, uh, it was very toxic. I mean, the, the thing was lined with asbestos, you know, the whole the uh, building that I worked in. I mean, we were working with fiberglass, um, a lot of really toxic stuff. I mean, it just, it literally burst my appendix. I had to go to the hospital way back when. Um, my wife... Here was in uh, Iraq as a soldier. She was around depleted uranium munitions of all kinds. So we had a lot of things going against us, fluoridated water and everything else, um, pharmaceuticals, drugs and things. So, you know, the Lord had us wait till we really detoxed, and then he gave us little Oliver here. So, um, like I said, we're going to get into more detail. But the fact is, another thing a lot of people have said is, well... If you, do, if you start to have children or if you're going to have a child, you're going to change your tune very quickly about the insurance thing. Uh, no, actually we aren't. Um, you see, and again, I'm not saying this out of pride. I'm not saying this to put anybody down who's been through the hospital birthing thing or whatever. But um, the Lord, through his power, through the wisdom that he can give, when you put your faith in him, when you live by the King James Bible, there are no hospital births in the King James Bible, no cesarean section births or whatever else. Through his power, he enabled us to have Oliver over a year ago in this very room, right over there. You aren't going to see it on the camera, but right over there on an air mattress. And the Lord helped me to deliver my son, myself, no midwife, no doctors, no vaccinations, nothing. Okay? So it can be done. And ironically, too, it's kind of interesting because our son would have been conceived in December and born in September. Very ironic because that's exactly the timing that the Lord Jesus was born. Kind of a neat thing. Uh, God's been very, very good to us. And again, you say, why are you doing this? Are you trying to rub it in people's faces? No. Brethren, you can live by the King James Bible. You don't have to say, well, that's the way they did it back then, but we don't do it that way anymore. You can live by God's Word. You can trust this book and say, you know what? It says it. I can do it that way. That's the purpose of this video. Okay, we're going to be showing a lot of things in this video about natural birthing. Because um, I know a lot of people probably have questions about it. There's a lot of information online. Uh, the Lord helped me to do quite a bit of research on this thing, on this topic. And a lot of it's new age, unfortunately. Again, you know, Satan is such a master at counterfeiting. Yeah. <laughs> Satan's such a master of counterfeiting that he will he will take, you know, and he's 14 months old going on 15 months. So he's, he's a big boy. But um, right. Satan is such a master of counterfeiting, he'll take things that are the Lord's and he'll twist them. A lot of witches get into herbal, you know, herbology and things, herbal <laughs> cures. Well, where did that come from? Came from the Lord. God's the one that created the herbs, not witches. You know, a lot of people in the New Age will take home birthing, natural child birthing. And they, you know, it's all, oh, it's so great and everything else. And it is great. But it's, it should be, Christians should be the ones doing the home birthing. You know? I mean, midwives are all through the, the Bible, Old and New Testaments. I mean, it's, and again, you know, oh, well, this is impossible. This, this, you know, you shouldn't have done this. This was taking great risks. You know? I come again, from a medical establishment family, okay? Mm -hmm. My mother, Marie Carolyn Ulrich Kutra, is a medical goon and has been for over four decades. Yeah. And let, me, let me make a point. 
I got to make a point though on this. Okay, let me finish my point. My point is that you know this this whole thing of well, you took great risk having the child at home. Uh, we're going to talk a bit, a little bit more about this and get into the study and things. But again, are you really trusting God? I mean, you know, can't God provide? Can't God take care of the situation? I mean, where was the midwife? Where was the doctor when Jesus was born? In a stable. You know? Oh, yes, but that's back then, but we're today. But aren't, isn't the mindset out there supposed to be that we're more intelligent today than they were back then? You see? It, it's, it, that's why it's just like, there's a lot of problems out there among the professing Christian church, but uh, I just want to get into the thing. We're going to tell the story, and this video is being made for uh, young women that are not married. Something to consider if the Lord brings a husband into your life. Make um, sure he's of your nationality, your exact same kindred, and mm -hmm. make sure the Lord is your matchmaker, not man, yeah. not friends and family. Make sure you pray fervently and effectually for the perfect match that the Lord provides for you. Yeah. Because if and you if you integrate racially speaking or kindredly speaking, you will have uh, childbearing problems. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, you know, people say, well, that's racism or something. We're not saying that whites are superior to blacks or something like that. We're saying that there are kindreds, different kindreds, that genetically some are shorter, sm smaller in stature. And you get people that are huge. You know, you take somebody that's uh, oriental like a japanese person and you you marry them to somebody like uh that's african descent a hamite according to scripture uh you're gonna have problems there's gonna be problems and and again it's not that you know god hates people that do that or whatever and and but you're you're making problems and, and if you god's read not the, gonna bless the delivery process and, and you, you read through the old testament and god's telling the jews hey don't go down there don't don't marry those people don't marry stay within your own kindreds so yes, it is important. Okay, that's something that's it might not be popular, but you know, since when has the Bible been a popular book? So, this is for young women who are looking to get married and then thinking about starting a family. We're going to show you the reasons why you should not consider, not even consider a hospital birth. Okay, and don't get ahead of us because I know somebody's writing a comment right now. But I had to have a hospital birth or I would have died or something. Just hold on with that. Okay. Don't answer the matter before you hear it. Secondly, this is also for young expecting mothers, right? If you are expecting, if you are with child, the Bible term, it's not pregnant, you're with child, um, this is for you. If you are a current mother with a little one, uh, there are some tips and tricks that the Lord has showed us, things that you can do that are, that are again, we're not being elitist here by showing natural ways to do things. The natural ways are much cheaper, much more affordable. And they're much better for the baby's health. And the mother's right? stress level, too. Yeah. So, again, back up a little bit here. This way. So, um, so again, uh, there's some tip is, tips and tricks and things uh, that you're going to be able to learn from this. So, we'll begin. Um, for when we first moved here, it was in the middle of January and it was very cold. This place did not have heat and everything else. And, and um, so for a while, it's okay, just let it down there. Uh, for a while, we had no idea that my wife was with child. And um, I remember she said the one time, you know, about, am I gaining weight or something? You know, are we eating too much food or something? And at the time, you know, we were hurting for money and it was like no we're definitely not eating too much food <laughs> you know and, and god's always provided too there again i see that you know why don't you get a job and provide for your wife god's always provided for us okay so you know whatever run along you know go to some other video but uh so you know this one night i remember thinking and i thought to myself what if she's with child what are we gonna do because you know i looked into it in the past i looked into the thing of natural childbirthing i went through a little bit of training and stuff on that and uh, so I knew a little bit about the natural childbirthing thing, but I didn't know a whole lot. And then the one night, I remember, you know, we were getting ready for bed and everything. I looked and I saw movement in her stomach. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, okay. It's no longer just, you know, what if. It's now, there's a baby. And so we started praying about it and we started to discuss this thing. And it was just like, 
we're going to do a home birth, and that's just going to be the way it is. We are going to live by faith, and I pray that you do the same. All right? Uh, it's, it's best a, it's to sell thing. out completely to the Lord. Sell out 100% to the Lord. Yeah. And again, you know, we're not putting people down by saying that. It's called exhortation. You know, people say, oh, you're elitist. It's exhorting the brethren. Okay? But we decided we're going to do things as close to Scripture as we possibly can, and we're going to see if the Lord will bless this whole thing. And again, He has. So, were there any ultrasounds in the Bible? No. And ultrasounds, they put off an extreme high EMF field, electromagnetic frequency, and which is carcinogenic. That's why you hear bad things about, uh, you know, don't live under power lines or something like this. Um, EMF fields are very, very bad. And there's a lot of people out there that will not have an ultrasound. And again, you say, but what if something's wrong with the baby? Okay, well, what can you do? Why not just put your faith in God and say, okay, we're going to trust the Lord on this thing. You say, but but what about, you know, uh, if it's a boy or a girl? Again, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. You know? Um, so that was a, a thing. And we started to study this whole thing of natural childbirthing and there are hundreds probably thousands of videos online of women uh, in all different countries having children at home and so it was like a great comfort and as we studied it more and more and saw there's a huge a huge body of evidence out there showing childbirthing at home is far superior to hospital births and the reason that for hospital births is because of ignorance uh, again, I'll tell a little story on this. Um, I went to Honduras at one point in time. And we lived in a little village down there. And there were people. And, we, you know, we were taking these little medical bags around to them and stuff. You know, giving them toothpaste and soap and uh, neosporin and things like this. And we actually uh, heard later on that these people in this village, because it's an oligarchy in Honduras, if you didn't know that. It's basically rich plantation owners with their slaves living beside the plantations. Chiquita Banana is a big slave holder down there. And so the people are like wretchedly poor and they're ruled over by the rich. Honduras. And so the people... You just want to sing or something, don't you? No oh, man. Um, so the people down there, uh, they were so ignorant that they were brushing their teeth with Neosporin and putting Colgate on their cuts. Now, that's, that's an interesting experience. You know, so, but see, what was the problem? They were ignorant. They're not bad people. They're just ignorant. If you've had a hospital birth, if you've gone through that whole system and the, all that stuff, you're ignorant. You're not a bad person. We're not condemning you. Okay, so please don't think that. But we started to look into this thing, and we decided, like I said, it was going to be a hospital birth. And the very... Let me hold him for a little bit. The very, very clear advantages. I'm going to show off his little shirt here. And again, you know, oh, there's Nazis or something like that. No, we're not Nazis. Nazis you know, are Roman Catholics. Yep, so we're definitely not Nazis. But it says, uh, made in America with all German parts. So, because we're both German. Amen. Descent, so. Praise the Lord. But anyways, um, so, uh, what was I thinking here? Um, the thing about we and again we had no idea what the due date was we have no, you know no idea it's just like we'll trust the Lord so we got the supplies that we needed which we'll go over here in a minute if you're going to have a home birth again it's very cheap it's not expensive you know you can pick up this stuff on the internet eBay whatever uh, you can get it it's it's not that much can I say what something say? about um, trusting the Lord in, even throughout adversity yeah well Last summer, summer of 2014, uh, just want to tell this real quick story. During that time, uh, my parents came from Iowa out here to visit us for a few days. And, you know, we ignorantly thought, hey, you know, they can help us with projects and, you know, we'll have a good time. We can learn a lot from them. Well, no, it didn't work out like that. In fact, uh, Marie, my mother, as you already know her name in its full entirety, uh, one day, uh, Brian and my dad were, were working on some outdoor projects together, and, uh, and she was in here with me, the two of us, and 
she started going off on a tangent about, you gotta have a hospital birth. You gotta go to the hospital. You gotta make sure you call the ambulance when it happens. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And the Lord in his perfect timing, you know, he, uh, you know, times it out that I have to go to the bathroom while she's saying this and in a tangent about, you must go to the hospital for birthing, you know, and, uh, on my way, I picked up a Bible, one of our, one of our Bibles, King James Bible, mm -hmm. nothing else. Look up there. And, uh, I, um, uh, <clears throat> and with the Lord's help, I was led to, at his prompting, I should say, I was led to the book of Luke. And Which, you know, we referred to this earlier, but we'll just turn to the verse because I know that there might be some women that are watching that don't believe the Bible or, that, you know, they think, well, the Bible is just an old book. It's not relevant to today. Or that it's archaic. Yeah. Go ahead and read um, the verse. And in chapter 2 of the book of Luke, these are the verses, the seven verses that I read to her, literally showed to her with her saying over my shoulder, um, starting with verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Hmm, interesting similarity mm -hmm. to today. Uh, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, firstborn son, mm -hmm. and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And uh, the Lord put the interesting question in my head as I was reading those verses to her, and she stood next to me, looked over my shoulder, and read along with me. And I asked her bluntly, I said, where in those verses do you see anything about a hospital, medical center, medical clinic, doctor, or whatever? And she said, hmm, nowhere. And I said, uh, oh, and see those verses about the, all the world being taxed? Doesn't that sound familiar to today? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, it does. And praise the Lord, she didn't say a single word about, you got to go to the hospital for birthing. <gasps> because in today's society, uh, delivering a baby is called an emergency medical procedure. Right. And and, and well, her mouth literally stopped. I yeah. mean, I, I kid and, you not. And just, just you know, to, to continue with this, go to that next, go to, go to here. First you can look Timothy. up that one. Um, just to continue with this, again, you know, this is one of the big problems with the hospital childbirthing because you go in, it's an emergency, they're taking you in, you know, you're going through all this stuff, it's a, it's this sterile environment, I hate the smell of a hospital, it's just disgusting, and you know, you go in there and it's just like emergency, emergency, you know, and you're hearing all this noise and stuff, and a woman who is in travail, as the Bible says, in labor, uh, there's a lot of things going on there with her mind and stressing her out even more is going to make problems. So again, and this is one of the biggest arguments, in my opinion, against hospital birthing, and that is the single most toxic thing to the body of people, to your body, is stress. I firmly believe that. I believe you can even live on a poor diet, and if you don't have much stress, you're going to live longer than somebody that eats perfectly and has lots of stress. Uh, stress is very, very toxic. So when you have a woman going into the stressful situation of a hospital, she's on this emergency table, there's lights on her, there's all kinds of people. She's going, where's my husband at? Where's my husband at? You know, all this stuff, there's going to be complications with that childbirth. But in the privacy of your own home, where you can put on, you know, we're going to get into a little bit of, of um, some of the techniques and things like this. And it's a low stress environment. It takes the danger level of a lot of complications down significantly, way down. Okay. Very important. But there's another spiritual tie in to this thing of a woman giving birth. Go ahead and read it. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. 
And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, you see this thing of, you know, if you go back to the Garden of Eden, if you really understand what the story was about, it wasn't that Eve took the, the forbidden fruit and because she wanted to be a god in her own right. Um, she listened to Satan. If you don't know the story, you can read about it in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, it wasn't that she was deceived and then Adam was deceived also. Adam saw what she did. He knew that she had disobeyed God and he decided to die with her. She was the one who was deceived. But God doesn't look down at a woman and say, oh, you're trash, you're no good at all. No, he actually has children be born through the woman. And the thing of, of why did Eve do that? Well, she wandered away from her husband. Whereas if you have a child, if a woman is with child, and she relies upon her husband more than the medical establishment and things, there's going to be this, a much stronger tie there. Uh, there was no stranger looking at my wife. And, and and multiple strangers looking at my wife. It was yeah. myself. And there were no threats from the medical goons saying, oh, "If you don't do, if you don't vaccinate your child, yeah. are we going to have to call and, the, and the CPS and the whisking, law enforcement on right, you?" Right, and whisking him away to give him shots that we don't know about and take his blood and mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And it goes on in the hospitals again. They're giving they're giving mm -hmm. newborn babies hepatitis shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, the vaccine thing is out of hand. I mean, there shouldn't even be any vaccines, but the point is, it's totally out of hand. Again, stress, stress, stress. That's and why there's so many complications with childbirth. Especially with the latching of, of the child. You know, yeah. right after they're born, if the child is born in a hospital, the child is going to have not only spiritual problems, but problems with recognizing his or her parents, and they're going to have problems with latching. Yeah. And so you have all these classes to teach women how to properly nurse when that's not even necessary stay home and have your child right. and call upon the lord for help and and again you know you say but what about high risk pregnancies and things you know i'll use their term you know my wife was one i okay? was almost 32 when i had him yes and the lord First child yes and the lord helped me through it and I called on him. I cried out to him for help. I don't know how many times. I was what delirious or almost delirious. Getting there. Yeah, I was getting. I was getting to the point of delirium it was, because. Well, 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 well. I guess we can we can mise, Let's get back to the story, and then you can tell why she was. So, um, you know, we we went through this whole time, and I remember the one morning I was going to actually go get some raw milk. Which, uh, well, actually, maybe we, ought, maybe we ought to go on the diet thing here and just explain. Because this is another big part of the thing of childbirthing. There were no prenatal vitamins. Okay? Yes. That's another big thing, another big scam. Uh, a lot of, you know, people do not understand nutrition. And again, I've mentioned the thing of whole food, raw food diet. And people go, ooh, it sounds fantastic and amazing. It's not. And people whole think food, it's expensive. And it's not. Yeah, good point. Whole food diet is your food is not coming to you in a box with pretty designs on it. Okay, it's not TV dinners, it's not microwavable, it's, it's as close to nature as possible, right? Yeah, and <laughs> you know, if you can, when you have fruits and vegetables, eat, eat them raw. Yes. Okay, um, obviously something like a potato would be a little bit crunchy, all right? Cooked potatoes, but carrots, celery, uh, all your different fruits, eat them raw. Uh, even applesauce. I mean, we make our own applesauce from wild apples in the area, and uh, they're great. Again, people snub the wild apple trees because they're too small and all the stuff in the area. They're very, very good. And, and they you, fill you up just as much as a regular, you know, right. hybridized store-bought apple. Yeah. And you you actually, you know, grind them up raw, and they make phenomenal applesauce. Put a little bit of cinnamon with it, and it's, I mean, it's good. No sugar, no honey. You don't even need that. So... But the point is, whole food, raw food diet. And we'll show you this. When we found out that she was with child, it was like, okay, she started to do a lot of research. Again, very important. There were no, there's no need for vitamins. A proper nutritional diet, eating the kinds of food that God makes, not processed factory toxic waste, okay, that you get in the store with corn syrup and all the other additives. Eat it as close to nature as you can. Cook your meats. 
you know, and things, but eat your fruits and vegetables raw. That's all whole food, raw food diet is, okay? It's nothing really tremendous or whatever else. And the vitamin, the prenatal vitamins, uh, check out on the label, the back of the label, who manufactures it. Uh, if you dig deep enough into who manufactures the prenatal vitamin or supplement or any supplement out there, it will go back to the pharmacopoeia industry. Yep. Which, which should make you question, what really are they giving me as quote unquote vitamins and supplements? Okay. Keep that in mind if you, if you reach for the vitamins and supplements. Mm -hmm. And you know, and a lot of that, the vitamins are synthetic. Yes. Not even real. So, here's, but anyways, go ahead. Here's the, uh, if you can see it, Brewer Diet for a Healthy Pregnancy. They use the P word we say with child because that's the Bible term, yep. with child. And I followed this, this diet religiously every single day once the Lord showed us, yes, it is really true that I am with child, you know, with at least one child. We thought maybe twins, you know, potentially, but one, one definitely. And uh, we used the... Uh, was it the stethoscope? Yeah. We bought an old stethoscope, a used one. We Everything in our place, you know, it's like used, vintage, antique, you know, and things. Love, because Not because love, we're like antiquers love. or something like this. We, I mean, we do love old love. things, but it's because it was made right love. back right. then. So love. you find good, good quality love. vintage things. And let me but just say this about uh, the we, Ruhr diet. We, we used a stethoscope to listen for heartbeat and everything else, you know, and stuff. So yes, that was our ultrasound. And of it course, it was an ultrasound to listen to. Ah. Right. <laughs> but, but go ahead. Explain a little um, bit about the diet. Well, let me just say this real quick. Uh, the the website, the real blue ribbon baby org. They've updated it from when I initially printed this out a couple years ago, with the Lord's help, and they now have a section called uh, their brewery diet with fast food or something. Let me just uh, tell you this right here now. There is no such thing. <sighs> as healthy fast food in existence that's why it's called fast food because it's convenient it's fast and they will cut all kinds of corners to give you what they call healthy but it's not healthy they use canola otherwise known as canola oil they mm -hmm. use all sorts of hydrogenated partially hydrogenated vegetable oils uh, see, soybean oil is very, very harmful. Yeah. yeah. And so, people are like, "Well, can I, can I eat, uh, you know, tofu for for this brewer diet? Can I eat, uh, you know, can I do the vegetarian vegan diet for this brewer diet instead of these, uh, you know, oh, I'm harming the animals by eating meat? Uh, no. The Lord showed us that when you follow the biblical diet, which is, you know, not tofu." Tofu is not a good thing to eat. It's basically soybeans by another name. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried it, and it tastes awful. And it did yep. nothing for me in but my college years. Let me break in here real quick. Um, as far as, again, don't be out there going, oh, you're, you're judging me because I eat fast food. Uh, I eat fast food for a very long time. Me too. Okay, so we ate, We both are former junk eaters for most of our lives. We've only been into really strong natural health diet now for a couple of years, really since we've been married. So, again, you know, please don't be like, oh, you know, they're, they're just so harsh. and No, we're not. We're just telling you how to live a good, healthy life. I mean, we both feel better now than we ever did in our lives. Amen. So, it's amazing. And again, why? Why? Because a book written thousands of years ago is still good for today. Amen. And this book, in particular, the King James Bible was written 400 years ago, over 400 years ago, finished in 1611. And this, so, and the King James Bible condemns vegetarianism and veganism by saying vegetarianism is a doctrine of devils. Amen. And you know, again, I'll just show you a little, our little guy here, our big guy. You know, right there, you can see how big this guy is. You know, back up so you can get him whole camera here. And yeah, pulling his shirt up. Yeah. Sorry about that, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver. But uh, the point is, there you go. this little guy, he's already wearing. He's 14 months old and he's wearing uh, 18 months to two year old clothing. Um, it's incredible. Uh, you know, I was kind of like, you know, we'll have time to kind of get things fixed up here and whatever else is, as he grows. Oh boy. You know, we, we put him in the kitchen and he'll, 
he he's still you know scooting around a little bit he, he'll grab things and he'll walk that way but uh he reaches up onto the kitchen table we got to push everything back from the edge of the kitchen table he's reaching up and grabbing stuff off the kitchen table <laughs> um even our kitchen countertops way up you know high he'll, he'll reach up he'll grab stuff there i mean he's he's literally a couple inches away from the stove top being able to reach up and grab things so and why well because it started out brewer, brewer. diet right there um eating meat as part of our diet because it's not just for her health you have to start eating for your baby's health you're eating very, for two people very important okay ladies don't worry about gaining weight okay and, and again again another point whole food raw food diet the weight that you're going to gain is not going to be the same as eating food that's processed because processed food has cellulose which is basically sawdust if you take it back it's wood wood cells or wood fiber they'll say you know, it's sawdust mm -hmm. okay it's fillers so you eat you have to eat more of it to feel satisfied that's why you gain a lot of weight but you know the weight that you're going to gain when you have a child you're going to gain some weight don't think about your slim trim figure and whatever else okay right. so and but, if you have access to grass-fed raw cow's milk or grass-fed raw goat's milk that is much better than low fat skim you know uh stuff like that that's low fat milk you need the fat you know for this little man because real grass-fed raw milk is a really good superfood not only for you but also for the developing baby and by baby i'm talking the living cell that is formed after the egg and, and sperm are joined together to form the the tropoblast the 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 baby you know and uh the yeah. tropoblast becomes a baby either during the eighth week or right after the eighth week is completed right and so you know don't say that i don't know when a baby becomes a living soul it's when the egg and sperm join together and form that cell that becomes that baby inside of your womb so i'm talking to you as women i'm talking to women and ladies yeah and uh abortion is murder yes so regardless of how people try to philosophize it away and if you but follow this daily religiously and don't stray from it don't go for vitamins don't go for supplements just follow this and don't say i don't like meat if you don't follow it you will have complications mm -hmm. yeah so again you know another reason that you hear this thing of what if there are complications with your childbirth what was your diet like all right another thing uh, that we did when Oliver was in the womb and we didn't know he was Oliver at the time but you know the point is when he was in the womb I did the shopping okay I went into the grocery stores because the moronic grocery stores decide that rock and roll is the appropriate music to please their customers you know it wasn't that way growing up you know but of course everybody's you know being fully given over to Satan now so and rock and roll was from the devil but you know it's a witchcraft it's, spell right so again rock and roll is a very destructive form of music and that's it's, this it's, this little man right here is exactly why we militantly rebuked that satanic witch's yes. coven across the street from here in August. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's that I cut some of that stuff out because we weren't ready to release this yet, this information, but that's why I was such a wild man and well why she was such a wild woman. <laughs> Amen. Because it was it was angering. It was just like you why you're bringing this into our our little quiet neighborhood here. My son has to take a nap. I mean, why are you doing this? Yeah, it and it, it's a church that's doing it. Yeah, sure, right, pagan cult. But I digress. But the whole point is, there are many things that you can do while the child is in the womb to help the child to grow properly. Okay, and and, and we do have some notes for this, but we're mainly just trying to get through this thing. We don't rehearse things, so I apologize uh, if if it's a little uh, sketchy or boy, you're getting slobbering here. Keeps putting his thumb in his mouth, but uh, he just woke up from his nap, so excuse his little hair, sp spiky hair here. But uh, anyhow, um, another thing that you can do that we did when we found out we definitely have a child uh, that's forming is Bob. we read uh, to him from the Bob. Bible, Bob. and I would specifically Bob. put Bob. my mouth down towards the bottom of uh, the her womb. stomach, there, the womb there. 
And what that does is, uh, with, with child birth, birthing, you have, um, you want the child's head to be down, facing downward. So they're basically like this, you know. Right. <laughs> they're, they're basically like that. Because if they come out feet first, that's called a breech birth. And it's a lot more tricky because when a baby's first born, their little heads are very floppy. They don't have much neck strength. And so when they're, they come out head first, you can cradle the head and you bring the baby out much easier. Mm. Feet first, it still can be done. Mm. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to call the medical goons. You know, you can still do it. It's just a little bit more tricky. You can get the umbilical cord around the neck and things, but it's still, it still can be done. Um, again, you know, in other countries, breech births are kind of like, yeah, it, it happens, you know. If you're here in America, it's like, oh, call the hospital. No, 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 no. Again, but see, what can you do to help prevent that? Stay away from rock music. Play soothing music. You know, old when hymns. he was, yeah, old hymns, uh, classical music, things like that. When he was in the womb, if there were loud noises, you know, well, you, you're just not into being on video right now, right? Um, <laughs> if there was loud noises, he would kick and he would, you know, he'd be flailing his little arms and stuff. Loud noises are not good. And the for day. A, a and especially in August, when uh, you know he was first exposed to the satanic witches' spellbinding music across the street from here, um, he he started trying to move a little bit to the to the music, and you know the Lord put in my head, you know tell say this. So I told little man, I said, do whatever you can to resist the satanic music. Do not move to it. Do not let it get to your head. You know, rely on the Lord to help you get through this without submitting yourself to this to this satanic music. Mm -hmm. Something to that effect. And you know, again, a lot of you are probably going, "This sounds so foreign to me." They're everything. They're calling everything satanic. We are not doing this out of ignorance. We are not some kind of inbred hillbilly rednecks that were raised with religion forced on us or something like that. We weren't. We understand what is of the devil. You do the research. You'll understand it. Okay, rock music goes back to witchcraft. It goes back to voodoo. Look it up. Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame. They will tell you that it was the black slaves that brought it over. Voodoo. It came from the south, where the voodoo was very, very popular down the Louisiana area. You know, again, we're not making it up. Rhythm and blues came from voodoo. So you know, we, when we're saying this is satanic and that's satanic, the hospital system comes from the Vatican. Uh -huh. It was monks. You know, that, that basically formed the first hospitals. You know, again, what does the Bible say? Can we live by Scripture? Can we live by the Bible? Is the Bible just a moral book? Or does it actually have the code for healthy living? It has the code for healthy living. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, if you are saved, okay, we'll talk about salvation here later, but if you can live by faith and trust that God can provide, that. This book will bring you the, the best results. Okay, that's our owner's manual if you really want to get technical with it. But anyhow, so we would read to Oliver, quote scripture to him. I would read it so he knew the sound of his dad's voice. Put my head down there. There was no problem. He did not come out breach or anything else. He came out perfectly. Praise the Lord. Um, and so that was great. Uh, what else do you have as far as... Uh, while he was in the womb. Well, um, um, we we tried the we tried playing Alexander Scorby's audio King James Bible while he was in the in the womb and also after he was born. Mm -hmm. um, we did. Um, well, while he was in my womb, I I drank lots and lots and lots of red raspberry leaf tea. Um, and uh, which you know I I do want to make a point on that red raspberry leaf tea is more for the later you know, part of your, your being with child time. Um, you don't want to drink it really real heavy early on because it, it is, you know, kind of, it can somewhat induce labor. It makes the labor process easier is essentially the whole thing. So, you know, again, do a little bit of research on your own. Uh, but you want that kind of towards the end a little bit more. And don't um, drink it after you deliver your child because it causes... Uh, um, overactive letdown. Yes. And if you're nursing. And again, nursing yes. is the right way. Uh, he's never been on any bottles, any formula. Because formula is predominantly sugar, so. Mm -hmm. But uh, all about that money for, for the sure. medical goons. Absolutely. Um, and uh, 
what else? Um, also, when while I was with child, you know, I I had a terrible time dealing with the the itchiness from my skin stretching, and it just brought me to tears a lot of time, because I just I thought, well, how am I supposed to relieve myself of this itching? So the Lord put in my head, try witch witch hazel. Here you go, witch hazel. Mm -hmm. works wonders you just you know put some on a cotton ball rub it where it itches takes it away yep and uh, we tried and aired with other things like lotion lotion mm -hmm. doesn't cut it yeah uh i forget what all what all we tried but witch hazel amazing stuff i thank the lord for for teaching me the wisdom of using that on my itchy skin while stretching um and uh of course i got a scar too on my leg because it was itching so bad before the Lord the Lord showed me the purpose of witch hazel in that regard. Mm -hmm. So uh, you but, if you scratch your itching area while you're with child, you're going to end up with a scar if you scratch hard enough. Right. So it happened to me. Um, end process of time. Yeah. Uh, we um, really had no idea when he was going to come out. So the one uh, day it was like, well, uh, at the time we were getting. Um, raw milk which is also very very good for a woman with child grass fed not grain. grass fed yeah grain grain is going to give you gas it's going to uh, make problems it gives the cows gas too it's it's not good for their stomachs and things they weren't uh, that god didn't design cows to eat grass or, uh, grain grain excuse me god designed cows to eat grass uh, yeah that was a test congratulations you passed <laughs> praise uh, the lord <laughs> but anyhow so i was going to leave and she's like oh, i don't feel very good and, and everything Water broke, and uh, it was like, okay, not going for milk. And we started the whole process, and it was three days yep. total. Um, 72 hours. Be between the time water broke and Oliver was in our arms. And uh, another little thing that we tried, again, looking at a lot of the information out there, um, another thing is water birthing. Okay. Uh, again, it's not some kind of a witchcraft thing or some people's a, oh, you know, it's a, oh, you get, you get like this, like Catholic philosophy with a lot of the people out there, you know, if it's like some alternative thing, it's automatically evil. All right. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay. What are, what are birthing for some women works? Okay. Some women you get into a, uh, like a little swimming pool, essentially. You can, you can get them online, you know, a little kitty pool or whatever. And you put wa nice warm water in it. And it helps, you know, the baby comes out. I mean, they're not going to drown. They're coming out of liquid into liquid, and then you pick them up out of that. Okay, so don't worry about, oh, what if they come out into water? you got to have, like, a snorkel ready for them or something? No, you know. And so we tried it. The problem is, of course, that you have, and, and you know, don't go into a lot of detail, but there's things that are coming out during the process and the water you know, gets the water cold gets, too quick the water gets cold it gets kind of bad so you know and it, it was it was just kind of like the the position was all wrong and painful yeah it, painfully so, uncomfortable so well you're getting all worked up here aren't you you get you, do you have some things to say huh do you have some things to say huh you got some things to say he's like yeah i want to get down and play <laughs> Yeah, here you go to go to my mom for a little bit. So anyhow, so we were like, okay, you know, we had a couple of different options ready, and uh, again, you know, what are you going to do? You go to some hospital, they're going to say, oh, the child's not coming out. We got to cut you open. You know, first we'll give you an epidural, yeah, which is basically what is it, oxycontin or something which like that? Which is a derivative, oxycontin or Percocet or uh, uh, I forget the other one, but basically. Whenever you hear the word Oxycontin, Percocet, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you're dealing with opium, yeah. a derivative of opium from the poppy plant. So You, you know, are you dealing see. with street drug dealers in a lab white coat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, people don't know this stuff. You know, I had a surgery years ago because of my appendix blowing up because of the toxic factory I worked in, and I, I was on morphine. Morphine is heroin that's slightly altered so i was taking heroin no idea you know i've always said well i never took drugs well yes i did when i was in the hospital they don't tell you that stuff so again they'll give you this epidural it's basically a, a syringe with opium in it you know it's it's chemically altered opium which 
heroin is and morphine and all of it, and they give it to you right in the spine, mm -hmm. right about the belt line or so, right in that area, approximately. They give you right there, and then you can't feel anything, which again, it's like, that's not natural. That's right. not what God dis, you know, designed. God says that a woman is supposed to, in pain, that she's going to bring child out. Amen. But they say, well, we're going to have painless childbirth. That goes against scripture. Amen. It goes totally against scripture. Again, I know of I know of people that they'll say, well, just, you know, just do a C-section. I don't even want to try to have labor. As soon as I feel the, the water break and, and everything, just going to be cut me open, get the baby out, you know, put me under anesthesia, and it's done. You're going to have all kinds of problems, okay? And the baby and, or babies will have problems too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're the hospital childbirthing is just, it's bad. It's bad. And, you know, again, you say, well, I had a hospital childbirth. If you're a you know, Christian lady out there or any woman, actually, oh, uh, well, we've all made mistakes. We all do things that we look back and we go, man, if I'd have known that, if I knew back then what I know now, well, I certainly would have done that. And that's, again, part of this video, the design here is that we want to educate people about this thing. So, um, we were like, okay, the water birthing thing is not working. So uh, we were both just totally wiped out. I mean, we didn't sleep the whole time, three days. And I remember we set up our air, air mattress here and we had, you know, uh, uh, sheets on it and everything that could be washed and everything else. And, and a lot of cotton towels, pure cotton, by the way, yes. too, very important. Um, natural fibers are very important. And uh, again, our little guy here has always had natural fiber clothing and uh, very important. And, um, I mean, you can have all kinds of reactions to polyester, stuff like that. But again, you know, it's the same price. Okay, we're not saying you got to get the finest cashmere or whatever's. It's the same price, cotton, polyester. Get cotton, you know. So, and polyester basically is coming from recycled plastic, so. And chemicals. You know, yeah, problem. But, so, we uh, decided, okay, let's try out laying on the mattress. So we did that and um, and I remember we were both just so tired and I was like, you know, I just got to sleep for a little bit. And I, I was so out of it. I remember I woke up and I was literally like looking up at the ceiling, looking at the walls going, where am I? <laughs> I didn't even know where I was. I'm like, whose house am I in? And it's like, well, it's my house, you know. And I'm like, you know, thinking, who am I? I don't even know. I, I was just like out of it. And my wife here, uh, the Lord was just with her the whole time. I mean, it just you talk about a miracle. Uh, I've, I've never seen it before. A woman going through so much and just, and I was like, are you sure you don't? And she was like, don't even say it. She was just like, I'm going to trust the Lord. I don't care if it kills me. I'm going to trust the Lord. I, I and she said, was like, she was just like, let's just pray. And we prayed and we, and I mean, it was amazing. And so uh, long story short, um, his little head started to appear and you know grass-fed raw milk and water got me through when nothing else would would stay down during yep. the labor process we did use a little bit of black and blue cohosh two different things there we use a little bit of that because that helps to ease some of the pain and things um again you know you can do your own research into that but um don't you know, get we, it if you get black and blue cohosh ensure it does not include alcohol yeah so uh, which would be like a tincture or something like that. They'll put alcohol with it. But uh, so anyhow, so we saw the little part of his head here was coming out. And I'm thinking, man, it looked kind of small, you know, and everything. And, <laughs> and you know, so we're I'm coaching her through it and everything. And, you know, Oliver's head came out. And I was like, oh, uh, you know. And next thing you know, here comes the shoulders. And I was, you put your hands in underneath and you're cradling him. You put your hands kind of like this, you know underneath the armpits and cradle the head and you know because his head's floppy and everything so you you know i'm cradling him and i'm like okay honey you're doing good just push and boy when we got them two arms out it was just like out he came and he just came out like a little rocket and of course and, his infamous and, uh, uh, sign and so at first don't get ahead of me i'm right here at first well, yeah but see you're ahead of me <laughs> um at first, you know, a lot of times a baby will come out and they're not moving much or whatever else because the little, their it has to circulate. They take that first breath. It, you know, they used to pick a baby up and slap them on the rear at the hospital and that, that shock gets them, you know, going. You don't have to do that. 
but uh, we took a, a towel and you just kind of rub their little body like this and he cries you know it's like well coming into this world you should cry <laughs> so but at least he wasn't crying because of strangers touching him right but um so he cried and it was so funny because he was like he went like this he put his little hand up like yeah stretch his little arm up his right and arm. uh i'll tell you he he uh and then we you know started to nurse him right away and uh again that bonding there's no people coming in there strange people and and touching them and messing with them and stuff but we got to take him over here he's with his dad he's with his mom it's gonna be so much better for him you know? and, and, and you know let me just say this real quick and that is midwives are a biblical position okay we're going to read about that here. Actually, we could turn to that verse. Midwives are uh, a biblical position. So I'm not saying no midwife, but be careful about the midwife thing because of the, a lot of the midwives are just extensions, extensions of the hospital. And they'll take you to the hospital. And it's just like, again. And even you if you go to a, through the natural birthing center option, uh, let's look at the key word here. Center, which means medical establishment goonville. <clears throat> I mean, hospital extension natural birthing center and they're going to get you in there they're going to say you know i've known people that have done the natural quote-unquote natural midwife type of deal and the midwife is like well you know they hook them up to the whole medical thing it's like we got to go in for checkups we got to be you know your baby's not growing fast enough we're gonna have to mm -hmm. hospitalize them and all. or else the Come midwife on. will be like oh things aren't going well we need to transfer you to the hospital immediately it's an emergency <gasps> yeah and, and again you know a little dramatic well you know, i've and again, been around in my entire life yeah but again you know if you're if you're saved and you're living right and you're eating the right diet and you're doing all these things you're not going to have the complications right and again again let me just say this what if my wife would have died in this process to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why are Christians so f afraid of death? You know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says about we are not as others which have no hope. But yet a lot of Christians act like others that have no hope. They act like pagans. You know, they're scared of death. Why are you scared of death? I mean, could not, if, if God decided to take my wife home at that point in time, she's going to be with the Lord. Do you really believe in heaven or don't you? Do you? Oh, he's judging us, saying we're not saved. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Exodus chapter 1, starting in verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. There you see him. Of which the name of the one was uh, Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Like an abortion. But if it be a daughter... Then she shall live. Check this out. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called forth, or called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives invoked their constitutional rights. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry it doesn't say that. It says... And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered, ere the midwives come in unto them. <laughs> they lied right to Pharaoh's face. You know, the Bible says that we are to pray for our leaders so that we can live, live, live a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty in the New Testament. What does that mean? When leaders get corrupt, you can't be honest with them. Amen. Deceive the deceiver. Right now, the leaders are corrupt. Right now, the leaders are not going to be very happy that one little boy here escaped their system. He's this, not registered. This, this little guy here has not been vaccinated. He is not in their system. Okay? Praise the and Lord. It, and it's, it's disgusting what they're doing to children. They are literally out to murder the children. It's, it's, it's genocide is what it is. It's Eugenics. disgusting. But look at what God does. Okay? These midwives just lied to the God-appointed ruler. Remember that? Romans chapter 13. The powers that be are ordained of God. All right? What does God do? Verse 20. These midwives just lied. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. 
I'd like to see some Christian midwives out there. I really would. I'd like to see some older Christian ladies that learn how to deliver children and go out and say, we can't trust the medical establishment. We can't trust the government. We're going to get the children out of that system. No registration. No no goonery. Medical no birth goonery. certificate. Yeah. And just basically you say, well, how do you have record? Put it in the front of your Bible along with your marriage coverture. Yes. And so, keep your marriage coverture away from the government. Don't you dare say anything about it to those goons. Yeah. And, and if see, you do, it's all on you. Yeah. And see, and see, the whole thing is, why are Christians doing it? Tax breaks. Fear. Well, fear as well, but but they're they're trying to get money. Mm-hmm. You're selling your wife and your children for money to the government? And you call that true love? You got another thing coming. Yep. So, you know... Again, midwives are a scriptural position, but when you're yoked up to the government and the government is, is, you know that they're killing children, you know that the vaccines are bad, they're toxic, what are you doing? See? Again, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, well, well, Brother Ryan, you know, what are we supposed to do about the whole house church thing? How do we reestablish the structure of the first century Christians? Well, it's going to take a lot of work because, you see, you know, my nose. Don't take my nose. It's gonna take a lot of work to get back to what we used to have. All right. So, anyhow, let's continue here. Our little man here. And by the way, if you've been wondering why I've been a little bit absent-minded, you know, with some of my preaching in the last year, um, you're looking at the reason right here. Little challenge here, you know. Our little guy. Uh, I've only been able to do sermons during you know his nap time, so. That's why this, the preaching has been a bit off. But, um, you know... Speaking of the continuing delivery here, process. Yeah. Let's, we'll get to that. Hold on. Don't get ahead of me. You know... I'm um, right here. I have a move. Yes. So, Oliver comes out, and you take him, put him to the, to the, to the mother, and he starts to nurse, and it's a very important bonding time. Uh, basically, cutting the umbilical cord. Again, you can get everything that you need. You can get forceps like that, you know, and you can study this stuff. I mean, get books, get, you know, read articles, watch videos, all this. Uh, you get your forceps and then you, you clamp the umbilical cord. You wait for a while. Again, the hospitals are like pressuring women through. Just go through, go through. Because they're, the witches want that blood. Yes, yes. And so, you know, you clamp the umbilical cord, wait for a while so that everything that's in the, the placenta gets into the baby. Again, you know, some of you might not be interested in this. Don't watch the video if you're not interested. Then this is an umbilical cord clamp, okay? Again, you can get these online, and you basically put this on the umbilical cord about, you know, maybe a half inch or so away from, you know, and, and again, I'm forgetting a lot of this stuff. It's been a while ago since, you know, I don't know if it's exactly a half inch or three quarters of an inch or something. Half to right a, around that. Half an inch to an inch. Some place like in there. And you put your umbilical cord clamp on, and you clamp it on, and then that stays on there till the the remaining part of the umbilical cord dries up. Okay. And on that note, uh, I had left this thing on just a little bit too long, and the umbilical cord had basically just started to come apart there a little bit at his belly button, and it was starting to get a little bit red in there. So I took the clamp off, and we used just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Just right there, just common rubbing alcohol, a Q-tip, put it in there in that little bit red area, and in a few days the umbilical cord, the little stub, fell off, and he was fine. Again, you know, no need to rush him to the hospital because things are bad or whatever else. Another thing early on was uh, he his eyes had a little bit of gunk, a little, mm -hmm. you know, Crusty. Eye, eye boogers, we'll just call it that way, yeah. <laughs> you know, a little bit of uh, slimy stuff on his eyes, and again... A little bit of breast milk just a little mm -hmm. couple drops of breast milk and just right in the eye and boom cleared up again mm -hmm. you don't need antibiotics you don't need an all this stuff from the medical establishment you don't need it you just you don't need it and again you, know, you say well I know somebody that didn't work well what was their diet what was are they living right are they are they saved you know were so, they living in sin yeah I mean you gotta weigh all this stuff out again it all goes back to the book the Bible gives you the recipe for having good children, God's way, that grow up to be healthy. Amen. Right? 
And, and the umbilical cord, make sure it stops pulsating before you decide to clamp it. Yes. And then comes the next part after you do that, the thing they call birthing the placenta, which is basically where the placenta comes out. And to aid in that, you use... See if I can get it on camera there. Clary sage oil. Yes. Okay. It smells really good, actually. And Amen. I'll talk a little bit more about... Oh, we don't have the other things here. Let's go get them then. Thing. Um, the wipes. Oh. You want me to uh, go get that right now? Yeah, go ahead. You know, you basically put a couple drops of this on uh, the mother's stomach and the placenta will come out. And, um, and I'm going to say something else about that in a minute, but... Uh, there's a lot of this stuff, like I said, you might not be interested in all this stuff, but again, we're doing this study mostly to show that the Bible way of doing things does work in the 21st century. Uh, what went on in the 1st century still works in the 21st century. And, you know, again, on that note, you know, how many centuries, centuries and centuries and centuries, thousands of years, women have been having their children at home, having their children with a midwife, having no midwife, and it's just like all of a sudden now you can't do it this way anymore. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. The medical establishment is about making money. First Timothy chapter six verse ten: Love of money is the root of all evil. Okay. Um, but uh, when the placenta came out, um, we were not at all tempted to uh, eat it or eat parts of it. Again, that is the life of the flesh is in the blood. It's an abomination. Um, before the giving of the law, in the book of Genesis, under the law. In the book of, I think it's Leviticus, and in the book of Acts, after the law, after into the church age, three places God commands not to eat blood. Unless you're, unless you're Stephen Anderson's wife, then you can eat it. Um, or but, uh, other or so eat part of it. You know. Yeah. Or so, other professing women who say there's nothing wrong with eating a placenta. Yeah. So you know, and, and again they'll say, well, it's because we're mammals and other mammals do it. We're not mammals, okay? We're, we're spiritually and wonderfully created in God's image. That's right, young man. Yeah, see, he even knows. He's saying no. But, uh, so, it's kind of funny because then they do the thing of swaddling blankets, you know? You wrap up the baby, you know, and they're, they're in their little tight blanket thing. Not with this one. This little guy <laughs> had energy, just incredible. He's always been extremely strong. Uh, still does stuff that just blow our minds, but... He'd work his arm, his one out, arm up out, and zoop, out come the arm, and then and zoop, out come the other arm, and then his feet would be out next. So swaddling, you know, I think is good in, in many ways. And we, I, again, I practiced it and practiced it, making sure it was all tucked in the right way and all this stuff. Didn't work for this one. Uh -huh. um, but the next step uh, to go over is the thing of, well, you're just not being quiet for our video, are you? He's like, I having don't like technology. Really, having to really talk loud here. <laughs> but uh, he's like, let me down, I don't want to play. Um, but the next thing is you say, what do you do about a diaper? I'm so glad you asked. Cloth diaper, right there, okay? Uh, this is called bird's eye cotton. 100% okay? cotton. Yeah, pure cotton. Again, not expensive. You know, we're not elitist for saying use cotton diapers. You know, we saved, I think I heard, I've seen statistics anywhere from 3,000, 2,000, 3,000 and up for store-bought diapers, the disposable kind. And, you know, I'm not a big environmentalist or anything, but, I mean, come on. Plastic diapers, mountains of plastic diapers that you're, you're getting from your child, I mean, it's just, it's bad. Or even you know, bleached store-bought bird's eye cotton diapers that they call 100% cotton, which are really a synthetic... P-U-L liner down the middle that's sewn in there. Yeah, and they're and not big enough for no. maybe a brand new newborn baby. But let me just show you here how this works. These are just, we, we fold them this way so that they're easy to put on him. You basically just flip it open like this, you know, and then his waist goes in here like this. Like if he was laying on my chest, his waist would be here, his backside here. And then you just basically fold this up and this comes up around like that. And you like want that. to, and then you take take these ends here, and you go like this, and like that, and there's your diaper. Okay. But what about the folded and thingy? So that yeah, way... you want to fold the back too. You want to fold a little bit of an inch down, like this, you know, essentially to keep certain things in. Yes. Figured out. And then this here, you know, these uh, the leg area, you want to fold that in about an inch too. But again, there's videos out there you can see that for yourself. But all it is, if you open it up is just a square, a big square like that, okay, of cotton. 
and you you know clean off the thing you know and stuff we have a diaper pail again we've learned a lot of this stuff from just trial and error trying things um we you take uh, a five gallon bucket and you put some we use like an arm and hammer um, just laundry detergent baking soda based laundry detergent put a little bit of that in the bottom uh, fill it with water lukewarm water and then you just drop your soil diaper you, you know if there's solids on it you put spray that into your toilet and uh, then you take the diaper you clean it as best you can plop it in the diaper pail and let it sit there till you have enough to do your laundry and your laundry um, let me show you real quick there again you know people another reason we're doing this is because people say well having children is so expensive it doesn't have to be okay we all did all this stuff not because oh we're so poor we can't afford anything else we wanted to do it this way again proving the bible to be accurate amen that's the purpose when you're in ministry we are to live of the gospel okay this is my wife's homemade laundry soap i thank the lord for and, the recipe uh, it's real good stuff and basically we use this and a little bit of that um put it in the water put a little bit of uh, borax a little bit of uh washing soda in and then we don't even have a washing machine <laughs> that's how backward we are um if you have stains if you have stains we use a washboard you say well, that, that a washboard you actually use one they work great they and it's good very, exercise very well. yeah good for your arms and you basically just take a little bit of uh what is it is it feld's naphtha right feld's naphtha soap you get your diaper wet or whatever else and under the water Put a little bit of Fells naphtha on there on the stain area and just go like that with water and things it'll take the stains right out and lye soap if uh you know if you want to try that too because lye soap works great on all types of natural fibers like cotton and wool yeah and you know that that uh, washboard there was maybe what 20 30 dollars something like that something like that and then you say well what do you do then you just how do you wash it this thing right here show you the inside there like that this is a plunger washer thing and basically it pulls you push down it pulls the water up through and the air and things it pushes air down through and so it's basically like an agitator in your washing machine although it's a whole lot more efficient I and mean, gentler gentler but it's also way more efficient that's the big sell point for me because i mean um in the past using washing machines and things they, they don't really get your clothes as clean as doing it by hand um and you know it, it's it's incredible i mean your your shirts will smell much better I remember there again you know back in the older days and things uh when we used to have a, a washer at the one place we lived in gas land washing machine you know wash your shirts and you wear them a day or two and they you know they're sweaty again they smell bad again you got to wash them again uh with this system this thing is incredible i mean we literally washed a few types of clothing that had been through washers and dryers and uh this will actually take soap out of quote unquote clean clothes you actually get dirt and soap out of quote unquote clean clothes no electricity required all you need we use a a uh, a laundry tub like a like a double sink wash basin essentially uh, is what we use and we also have a hand operated ringer we enjoy it it's good Amen. exercise you know again you know people oh man you gotta do you, do you have a gym membership yes we do it's called laundry amen <laughs> you know so so it, you know hey and it's just like you know the power goes out sometimes and things here and and you know i mean it's it's fun it's exciting to do things without electricity it's great but even you know if you're going to do things you know with electricity or whatever else you say well i have a washing washer and dryer i don't want to give it up well that's fine you know but again use cloth diapers okay and you say oh it's icky it's disgusting get over it okay you know it's, it's it's your child you're dealing with with you know helping him grow up he'll get to the point where he's gonna be potty trained and if Everything. you're so and if you think that uh you know acting all immature about icky things isn't gonna harm his or her development it will because the child will grow up and be like oh i don't want to i don't like seeing my own product you know and they'll yeah. become mentally scarred permanently because you uh, and your immaturity were were saying oh it's icky 
well, if it's icky, don't have children. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, you know, and she's saying, you know, people that make a really big deal and, ah, oh, crash, crash, crash. Like you know, Zuminati. And, and things, yeah. So, anyhow, continuing. You say, okay, well, what do you do about wipes? All right? Well, there again. Uh, again, this is all trial and error, brother. And this is what we've learned in the last 14 months. Um, right there. You say, what is that? Well, this is a paper towel that is cut into a third. See it there from the side. Uh, you take a paper roll of paper towels, you cut them into three sections. Okay. Then what you do is, these actually smell very, very good. You take, <clears throat> um, see if I can remember this, a tablespoon of coconut oil, a tablespoon of a good soap, which we use uh, this here, this five star sh uh, shampoo is Calben. Very good stuff. Uh, there's no SLS junk in it. It uh, basically contains extra virgin coconut oils, extra essential cocoa uh, fat es essence with vegetable protein conditioner. Um, definitely non-toxic. You'd probably eat some if you felt like it, which I don't recommend, but you know, tablespoon of that, tablespoon of coconut oil, and we actually use uh, Clary Sage uh, essential oil. It's antibacterial, good stuff. And you put about uh, anywhere from 7 to 12 drops in, somewhere in there, 8, 9, whatever, it doesn't matter. You put drops into a, a measuring cup, and then you pour in, you, you get a tea kettle or, or heat up some, some water on the stove, one and a half cups of water. Now you take that mixture, you mix everything together, coconut oil, the soap, the essential oil, one and a half cups of water, you mix it all together, and then you basically pour it over top of the paper towel, leave the lid off, of your container that you're going to use and until this thing cools down but you pull the cardboard tube out of the middle and then I didn't show this once you pour, pull the cardboard tube out of the middle then you just pull the paper towel from the middle as you can see there okay you pull it out what you need rip it off there's your baby wipes very 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 fast to make I mean it only takes you a couple minutes not a big deal you go to the store you don't know what chemicals that they're using and things putting it on your baby's skin a lot of the, the cleansing agents bleach and things like that are carcinogenic again cancer causing so what about powder again you know the lord's helped us to learn this stuff and, and a lot of this you know we'd buy it from the store if it was if it was good if it was healthy but the stuff that's in the store that would be healthy is way overpriced and again you don't need it um this here is uh I don't know, remember the exact proportions, but it's um, basically it's arrowroot powder and baking soda, baking soda, and then whatever essential oil that you want. Um, it's, Not cinnamon. It's, yeah, don't. We use we use this stuff here, the cinnamon essential oil from uh, now essential oils. Not a good idea. It's very very uh, kind of caustic. It burns the skin. Um, one time by mistake you use what was it? Um, cream of tartar. Cream of tartar. She got the cream of tartar container instead of the arrowroot powder. Not good either. Very caustic. Um, so, predominantly arrowroot powder, a little bit of baking soda, a few drops of essential oil. We usually like to use lemon or peppermint. And um, so, again, uh, another very cheap way. And, and you know what's in it. Very healthy. Uh, not at all bad for the baby. Um, we've never once had any kind of diaper rash. The entire time, um, because he eats right and everything, we did try some citrus a little bit too early. Uh, and uh, so he did get a little bit of a rash just from the citrus, not because of diaper rash or anything else. Again, again, cotton is going to be much better for your baby uh, than the synthetic you know, plastics and things of the store-bought diapers. They're, they're going to lead to rashes. Um, this here is chickweed healing salve when the baby does get a little bit of a rash you put just a little bit of this on it's a it's just a a bunch of you know uh things there you can see it's it's like a just a i don't even know what you'd call it a cream essentially it's got uh beeswax olive oil peppermint chickweed and eucalyptus mm -hmm. and you can find it online chickweed healing salve it's very good for rashes and things and not just diaper rashes any kind of rashes uh very very good stuff so Again, you know, a lot of people will panic. Oh no, my child has a diaper rash. I have to get to, to the doctor. 
Mm. No, you don't. No, you don't. They're just going to give you antibiotics and things that are going to make it worse. So, and, and another thing I want to say, too, about the cotton diaper, the pure cotton diaper, is it's a much better transition um, getting your child from cotton to cotton underwear. Cotton diaper, cotton underwear. Then going from this plastic thing that swells all up, you know. Um, another thing you say, what do you do just to the cotton diaper? Well, another thing the Lord showed us is wool soakers. You put the diaper on the baby first, and then the wool soaker over top of it. Okay, <laughs> wool is very um, breathable. Breathable. It's it it will absorb moisture, but not you know get anything else wet. Um, again, you have to wash this uh, with special wool wash. Lamp. Again, it's it's not a, very expensive. Euclid it's called. Um, and you know, occasionally you have to put lanolin on it, which is like a, a oil from sheep, basically. Right. You put just a little bit of it with your wash water and stuff, and that'll they'll the wool absorbs it and it makes it more moisture, you know, wicking basically. Um, this is a boiled wool, I think it's called. Uh, this is these are actually from Germany. It has a little soaker layer inside of it, uh, which helps. Um, there's ones that don't have these. We'll use those too. But uh, you don't need a whole lot of these. Just a couple. You're fine. Uh, this this one here was actually made. Uh, it's the same thing as far as uh, it has the liner in it. But this one was made um, with like an old sweater, an old wool sweater, as you can see the design there. Uh, a little bit more open than the boiled wool design. So not quite as good at, at uh, protecting from leaks and things. Um, onesies, uh, just a quick little statement about that. Onesies, um, we never really liked them all that much because they're right down there in the area. They're always getting wet or whatever, you know, and, and it's like you're changing them all the time. We just didn't like them. I know that they stay down and keep the baby's belly warm or something. So we just go with little cotton t-shirts like this one, you know, like what he's got on right now. Yeah. Uh, we do wear sleepers on him. Again, all advice for young mothers out there or mothers that uh, or young ladies that are thinking about getting into this um, you know there's a sleeper this is the type that we like uh, now that he's older the the when he's real young we used ones that had little feet on them and stuff you know because he wasn't walking but now that he's walking he's up and walking he needs to have these little bare feet you know on the floor because they he grips with those and it helps him to walk earlier and things so this is a, a, another good thing um, oh, the powder, as far as putting the powder on, another little helpful hint that we found, these cotton rounds, just little, use them for taking makeup off or whatever else, but you can get these things in a dollar store, again, extremely cheap, and, uh, you know, it just doesn't cost much. Another thing we forgot to mention, yes. <laughs> a bulb syringe for when the baby's born, because they're going to have fluid in their mouth, they're going to have some fluid in their ears and their nose and things like that this thing here you go like that and it'll suck the fluid out so another very important thing um, a good pair of uh, sterile scissors like medical grade type of sterile sterile scissors they have that little end on them there you know so that they don't uh, you know you don't get punctured by it and you can use that to cut the umbilical cord and everything um, and you know there's probably a lot of men out there going this is gross this is disgusting well, you know, when you get past that and you realize your love for your wife and you realize, I don't want anybody messing with my little boy, um, it's not so bad. And it'll make a much stronger man out of you. I can attest to that. Um, Shampoo, you know, after the baby's born, you know, to wash his or her hair. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, the Calvin's uh, shampoo, yep. uh, very, very good. When Oliver was first born, uh, he he did have like a little spot on his head up in here, like a little bit of a like a scab, basically. And so we put this on. This is another good product, um, Supernatural Silver. It's a uh, like a colloidal silver-based, you know, thing. Put it on there. A couple days, it was gone. Right. Uh, totally healed up. With very you know, good stuff. Application throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, just. A lot of things. Um, other things to mention. Um, oh, the, the safety pins. Another big thing with the cloth diapering deal is you say, well, how do you keep the cloth diaper up? Well, safety pins. Um, 
Now I'll give you a little bit of advice here. Here are two different types of safety pins. Okay, I'll hold them there as close as I can. This one here is vintage. Okay, these again you can get these used on eBay. There's we actually got a whole pack of them that were still in the original packaging from like the 1960s. This is American made. Okay, good ones. All right, you can take this thing out like this. Okay, you can bend it. It's not going to bend. These ones here. Before we knew any better, we bought these from Kmart. These ones are made in China. They're brand new. These things, as you can see, it's already out of shape. It's already all twisted and everything. Um, these ones here, you can go like that. You're not going to do that with the vintage one. And okay? they won't resharpen if yeah. you try and use a water stone. I, right. I, I can sharpen things and stuff, and I tried to sharpen the points of these things. I couldn't sharpen them to save my life. They're junk. Okay, try to get vintage ones. That's going to be important. Um, sometimes, you know, the, it's a little hard to get the, the needle through the cloth as it's folded and you're pinning through like that. Another little trick that the Lord showed us is if you have a bar of soap there on the sink near your changing area, um, just take the, the, the edge of the safety pin, the point of it, and run it over the soap a couple times. Get a little bit of soap on there. It just goes right through the cloth. Just like butter, just boom, right through. Pretty neat. Um, little trick the Lord showed both of us. Amen. Uh, we, we raised Oliver um, at about four months. We started to see signs of him being ready. Let me hold him for a bit. We started to see signs of him being ready for... You know, just sure setting, stand him up here for a minute. Stand up. He's like, look at all this great stuff to play with. <laughs> Trying to grab the umbilical cord clamp with his toes. Here, look at this. <laughs> like, ah. anyways right around four months we started to see the the signs early signs of him watching us while we're eating and opening his mouth and you know and things and so it was kind of like well we'll try it so we mashed up some uh, red pears i think was the first thing we did or maybe no it was bananas um and uh, raw bananas of course we didn't cook them or anything and we put some bananas on a spoon we'll talk about the spoon in a minute and, you know, see if he would eat them. And not a problem. And, uh, I mean, he just learned to eat very, very quickly at four months. And uh, the whole time we've been, you know, she was nursing him. And she's still nursing him at uh, 14 months now. And uh, so we went. We waited for a little while. Let his little belly develop and everything. And probably about six months, uh, we started to give him meat that was ground up. Again, we've never bought store-bought food for him. Um, we don't know what's in that, preservatives and whatever else. Um, and, you know, I know they have organic brands and stuff, but uh, we've just, for a long time, we've been experimenting with uh, meat and potatoes. Just and because a food company tells you, this is organic baby formula, or doesn't mean Gerber anything. baby, means nothing. Yeah. They do that for the money, of course. Yeah, you can charge more money for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've never cooked his vegetables. We've never given him cooked carrots or anything like that. Again, you cook carrots, you're taking away the nutritional value. You're just wasting your time giving it to them. Um, raw fruits and things like that, ground up. Uh, we've done a lot of that. And, um, you know, the Lord's been real good, showing us a lot of this stuff. He's grown tremendously. Um, so, here you go. That. Try that. You going to play with that? It's like a wishbone. <laughs> just don't break it in half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, the thing, oh, as far as his eating is concerned. Another little trick that we picked up from some of the old, old time literature and things from the 1800s. It was a very famous thing that they would say, uh, you were raised with a silver spoon in your mouth, you know, and things. Meaning that the richer people would use silver spoons. Well, why did they use silver spoons? Well, because silver, sterling silver, um, it's 0.925 purity of silver. And it is antibacterial. That's why you have things like this, colloidal silver. They put some silver particles into here, and it heals. It's antibacterial. So when you eat with, and we don't have silver, you know, uh, things we eat with stainless steel. But for Oliver here, we bought a little silver spoon off of eBay, an old one, a vintage one that we cleaned up and everything, and, and we'll feed him with that. And he's never had a cold 
They've been sick uh, the entire time. And uh, we got a little silver cup too that we gave him water out of. Again, I know that there are some sippy cups and things out there that are, that are you know, non-BPA and the whole deal. But we just are like, you know what? Again, people didn't have this stuff in the past. Let's just try seeing if he can drink out of a cup. And he never had a problem with it. I mean, he's, he's done good from the very first time. I mean, he's, you know, he spilled a little bit and whatever else, but now he's getting to the point where it's like he'll he'll go through two or three cups of, of water at a meal sometimes. And he just just downs it. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So, um, and by the way, you know, you can say, well, you've sheltered him, you know, and things, and, and uh, he's had a sheltered life. That's why he's never been sick. Well, let me show you uh, just the action that this little guy has seen in his life, his... Uh, short little life so far that he's had. Um, here's a picture of my wife with uh, him in a carrier, which we'll discuss in a minute. We're snowshoeing. Speaking it of was the in, carrier. It was in February. We'll get there in a minute. But you can see here the picture of him. He's in the carrier. And the snowshoeing uh, where we were at there, it was about four feet of snow. It was uh, powder snow, which we get a lot of up here in Maine, northern Maine. And uh, it was about four feet of snow that we were standing above, and it was six feet up in the wooded area where we were at. So, because uh, it's, you know, field-type areas, more cleared, it's it melts down a little bit more. So, but you get into the really deep area in the woods, it's it's way up there. <laughs> so, you know, that of February, it was it was cold that day. I mean, it, it snowed. It was like a, you know, really, really snowing hard at one point. And, uh, and he, he loved it. It was great. Yep. And, um for his birthday, instead of getting him a bunch of Chinese-made uh, plastic toys that make noise and You don't know whatever. what type of chemicals and toxic uh, yeah. items are in there. Um, instead of doing that, we decided, you know what, let's give him more adventures. So I'll show you another picture. Here's me and Oliver in a kayak and, uh, and uh, on a lake in the area. So, you know, um, he's had some pretty interesting adventures. And if we want to get him to take a nap, uh, his favorite way to take a nap is on the on an ATV. <laughs> so yep. we, there's ATV trails up here. We'll put him in a carrier, which if you want to show the carrier, um, we'll put him in the carrier, and he's there on, you know, sitting about like right here, like this, and we'll ride the ATV, and he just goes like this, puts his little head down, and just goes right out. It's a... Ergo baby. If you can see that. Okay. Yep. And this thing here, the strap part goes around your waist, and then the baby basically sits down in. You can put it on your back and whatever else, too. Again, again, you know, you say, what's the importance of, of talking about all this stuff? To show you that there are options. It's a great you, bonding tool. Yeah, to show you that, that you don't have to go. <laughs> He's like, I'm tired of this. You're so, not a fan of a video, are you, sweet man? No, he's like, I want to get down and play. But, um... Anyways, so we're, we'll be done soon. So um, another thing that some women will struggle with is the thing of when they're nursing, uh, there's what's called overactive let, letdown, where there's too much milk being produced. And too much he was, poor milk. Yeah. Meaning was, the light stuff. Well, just milk in general, but, you know, the, the poor milk is coming out first, but and the hind milk comes out after that. But um, he was a very good drinker. It's not that he wasn't good at that. But um, it was just, it was crazy. And uh, there's, you know, um, nursing pads that you can get if you're a nursing mother. Um, but there's problems that can happen there. There's bacteria that can form. You can get, was it mastitis or something like yes, that? Yes, because you know? nursing and pads are usually, unless you make them out of pure cotton yourself at home, you get them from the store, they're going to be either blended or they're going to be pure synthetic fiber based, which right. means, you know, Synthetic fiber not, is not breathable and right. absorbable. And so you're going to have bacteria form. So yes. it can lead to problems. Again, you know, we learned all this stuff. This is what the Lord's been showing us. Um, so what can help with that is uh, the thing of um, you can take oregano, put some oregano in your food. Garlic actually makes more milk. <laughs> oregano, parsley. Oregano, parsley. There's other things like that. Um, another thing that's really good for uh, all kinds of maladies and things for nursing mothers is chamomile tea german chamomile uh, tea yeah german chamomile tea organic again you can get it on ebay it's not very expensive uh, she drinks chamomile tea like all the time it's really good for you um because he was on 
uh, meat and potatoes for so long, and he's uh, just really been a very healthy boy. Um, again, the Lord blessed him with eight teeth by the time he was one year old. Yes. So he's got, he's got quite a few teeth, and he's starting to teeth again, by the way, too. Part of the reason he's a little bit cranky right now. <laughs> that and he can't be on the floor playing. He loves to play. Um, and it's funny, too. Just say this real quick. Uh, he doesn't even like to play with toys. I still have some old toys from when I was a boy. And we, we'll put them down sometimes. I mean, we've tried to buy him toys for him. And he just looks at them and is just like, eh, no, whatever. He likes to play with things, uh, spatulas or, or measuring spoons or things. He'll just play with them for hours. He has a thing now where he'll go over to a little turntable thing in our kitchen in the cabinets down below and he'll turn the thing and he'll just look at everything in there the beans and the and the jars of this and jelly and whatever else we store in there and there's these little metal tins of anchovies he'll get them out and he'll just go around the kitchen and he'll play with his little tins of anchovies for hours i mean he'll just he loves doing that and then he'll open up the cabinets and he'll he'll look in at the you know bottles of dishwashing liquid or whatever he just he's not interested in toys and again another thing uh, television, no television. No cell um, phones. Yeah, cell phones again, putting off EMF fields. Again, a lot of people don't realize that. You know, they think, oh, you're radical, you're crazy. Study it, study it. I used Stand to work in the industry. I yep. know what they're about because the Lord showed me when I was lost what that technology is all about. We gotta get this video um, ended soon, but well, uh, real quick, let me say this. Um, another thing, because he has teeth, we've uh, started to brush his teeth too. Got him a little toothbrush and things. You say, what does he do if he swallows a toothpaste? Well, he gets healthier. You say, why? Because, again, <laughs> we use herbal tooth powder. It is a powder. It is not a paste. Again, a lot of the old timers did this. See? It's a powder. You can even use baking and, soda. It's just as good, yeah. just as effective, and just as healthy. Right. Sodium and, bicarbonate. Yeah. And this stuff doesn't hurt if he, if he swallows some. That's a big fear, you know. If you swallow more than a pea-sized amount of Colgate or any of the other ones, or any call that, your poison control center. Right. Even the quote-unquote natural unfluoridated toothpaste still has the, if you happen to swallow more than a certain amount, please call your poison control center immediately. Right. Meaning so, it may be natural by name, but it's not natural by, by composure, yeah. composition. So, you know, it, again... You know, and, and again, you know, we're not we're not talking about spending hundreds of dollars on this stuff. It's it's all very affordable. Uh, you're going to spend a lot less money. You're going to be in much better health, and you're doing it God's way. Thrift stores That's are the, the way whole to go thing. for and clothes. Yeah, most of what we buy them is thrift store finds. This T-shirt we actually got off eBay because it's special. Um, but most of his clothes come from thrift stores, and most of our clothes come from this thrift store. So. Amen. We're not doing anything different there. But I uh, want to say this for, you know, when women are with child. When you're with child, um, you know, there's no, you know, if you want to wear a uh, modest shirt and a modest skirt, that's fine for the times when you're not with child because when you're with child and you're starting to itch that uh, band, whether it's elastic or not, from the skirt, any type of, you know, natural fiber-based skirt, is going to be really, really irritating. So you're better off wearing modest dresses, you know, one-piece dresses that um, button up or zip up, you know, from the the yoke line here, the bodice, down to about the waist-ish area. So it's easier for you to, to nurse your, your child or children after the child or children are delivered. And, uh, you know... If you make your own dress, that's great because it'll save you money. Um, but if you if you buy a modest dress, if you can find one, Lord willing, then uh, you know you could make yourself a modest nursing panel. This this can be used, and I actually do nurse in this from time to time. This is this serves as a modest nursing panel for your child to you know pull over while they're nursing, and it doesn't bother them. They, my son loves to you know pull this over over his face while he's nursing and play with it so you know but for nursing options with in modest dresses the button up the hook and eye you know latch thing or a zipper whatever you prefer um from about the waist on up to here works perfect for nursing mothers and also while you're with child because it won't make your it won't exacerbate the itching yeah. of your skin stretching 
Sure. Like the so, skirts will. Let's keep it going here because um, he's, he's not doing so good at video. I just, so. <laughs> I just want to say a couple uh, more things. Another, another thing I saw on our list there of things to talk about, pacifiers. Yes. Um, for a long time, we did not have a pacifier, just simply because we just thought, ah, is it necessary, whatever. By the time we got a pacifier, we thought... He's having some hard time sleeping at night, so we thought, okay, we'll try a pacifier. The, Lord, the Lord led us to a um, a good natural, they're like made out of natural tree rubber. It's not even, there's no toxicity to it. And uh, it was like made in Italy or something like that. You know, again, rubber. it's it's that, see, some things you're going to spend a little bit more for because it's like organic, it's good. But by the time we got it for him, you know, after a couple months, he was just like, he never did use it. You know, he'll, he'll play with it a little bit, chew on a little bit, and then he just, like, drops it and he's done. So, again, don't think that you have to have a pacifier or anything else. And you know, please make sure while you're with child, before you deliver your child or children, please get lots of outdoor exercise. Yes. Not the sterile gym membership environment. Go out and explore the outdoors. Right. Explore what God created right, for careful. you to enjoy. And, you know, also... Do lots and lots and lots of squatting because it will help strengthen your leg muscles. It'll help out with the delivery process when that time comes. You know, be sure to incorporate that. I'm just going to take okay. a little bit of a hike here. You can talk. Um, we did not use any Disney books because uh, if you saw the witchcraft study, Disney, the founder of Disney, Walt Disney, uh, was a high-level cultist slash Freemason. So uh, don't want any spiritual bondage from Disney books for in your child's life. Um, talk more about that in the future. But uh, this thing about baby shower thing that you have to do, you know, if, if you're like, oh, what if, what if I want to tell people? Don't do a baby shower. I've been through tons of those throughout my life with other people inviting me to them. And it's just, it's a sin-filled activity of, you know, gossip here and backbiting there and you know people getting all these different clothes for you know the the baby thinking it's going to be this type of gender or whatever and then they get into this we got to decorate the room in the house you know all dolled up for the baby or children when they when they uh arrive you don't need to do that save your money um you know save the headache of of that uh another thing is we did not do the baby registry nonsense Again, the key word, registry, okay? Don't let the goons in on what you do with your children. Train them according to God's word in your King James Bible, okay? Don't tell the goons about what you're teaching your children. And especially don't marry the state. I, I can't get into it right now, but um, I'll come out with this in a future study, Lord willing. Come out with it in a future study. Yes, we will come out with it in a future study, Lord willing. But I just want to say this about state marriage licenses. When you get a state marriage license, the government owns everything about you and your family, and it is a legally binding contract. If you study contract law, you know what I'm talking about. It is a legally binding contract that permanently gives the government access and authorization and certification to control everything you do. So, don't do it. Don't get a state marriage license. Um, and uh, we don't, obviously we don't go to a Bible building, so we don't have the spiritual bondage and fears as associated with um, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves nonsense um, that Bible building knights and papists love to put on us because we don't attend their cult building. Um, like uh, the Irelands and and uh, the Lenners from Tyga Gasland area yeah. put on us. Um, you know, and this thing about, oh, if you take your, your child outdoors in, in the cold weather, they're going to get sick. He has never been sick yet because of number one, uh, we follow God's word in terms of, you know, doing things his way. Uh, like we said earlier, Oliver has always been breastfed. Not a drop of formula, not a drop of Gerber baby food, you know, he's been breastfed, plain as day. And because of that, the mother is giving her immunity system to the developing child or children, depending on how many come out at once, usually one. And, uh, and as a result, 
you know, the Lord gave me uh, a good immune system. And so I passed it on to my son because I want him to have the benefits of having a good immune system. And so between uh, a biblical diet, like we explained earlier, um, you know, well water, spring water, whatever you call it, country water, that's yep. not fluoridated um, with a silver silver rounds, pure silver rounds in the filtered water. Uh, that also is a factor in him having such a great immune system. Yep. Um, and, 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 you know, again, I got to jump in here. Um, and the whole thing is, you know, again, don't get stressed out because there's so much stuff, so much information. This is 14 months, okay? A year and two months that took us to learn all this stuff, okay? So, you know, and years and years before that to learn about good health and things. So, it's a process, people. And okay. also, after the baby is, is out, please make sure you do this. This is very important for putting the, the child or children to sleep. Dim the lights, okay? Don't have bright lights on because that distracts the child or children. And they're like, yay, it's daytime. I'm going to get up and play. Um, no, you dim the lights and you speak softly. You don't speak loud in your normal tone. And, and especially, you don't want to talk about... Um, you know, deep critical thinking based subjects because, you know, the child's going to be like, oh, hey, I want to get in on this conversation. So then that also makes them active throughout the night. And then that makes it harder for them to go to sleep. So you want to speak softly and have dim lights, you know, for their nap time and when everybody's going to bed. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and so, um, I, there might be one or two things I'm forgetting, but, uh, reading to the child or children from the time when you know that you're with child, you know, while the child or children are in your womb and especially after they're out of the womb, reading is very, very important because, you know, life is rough if you don't, if the child doesn't know how to read and don't get into this. Well, my child has dyslexia or learning disorder. No, you're talking like a goon if you put that on your child. So you didn't get that from God, this thing of dyslexia. Your witchcraft doctor at the hospital medical establishment center told you, oh, I think the child has dyslexia or... Okay, so don't talk like that. You know, your child can and is able and will read you know, if you do the work and put in the effort and say, I'm going to make it a daily occurrence of reading to my child from the moment I become with child and I know it and throughout, you know, the, the early developing years of your child. Mm -hmm. Another important thing um, is, and we'll be talking more about this in the future too, uh, there's a whole other study on the thing of footwear. Um, again, um, a lot of footwear is going to really mess you up. Uh, years and years and years, I wore logging boots. And high heels. Heel, you know, and it's high heels for men, essentially. It messed up my lower back tremendously. Um, I've got, given up my logging boots, and my back problems are going away. So if you have a bad lower back, don't be wearing heels, elevated heels on your boots and things. Um, just a little example of, of some of his slippers. Flat, no elevated heel and things. They're flexible. His feet need to move. No you know, arch support. You know, especially if you have a little girl. You know, he's a little boy. But if you have a little girl, don't put him in high heels or little heeled shoes or something. Little little narrow toe box that pulls their toes in. Or toe spring. You know, yeah. I mean, that's another thing. And again, you know, you say, oh, this is so much stuff. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But again, we can look at the cumulative damage of many, many years of not knowing these things. And now... The amazing results just from a few years of changing some of the stuff. So that's another little point I wanted to just add in there. Um, if you want to hold him here, I'll, I'll uh, finish up. Prayer. Um, pray effectually for them every day. Uh, that's very important. Uh, we pray for our little man here every meal. Um, and, and at night before we go to bed, we pray for him. Uh, pray for the Lord's will. I mean, again very important we dedicated him to the lord when he was in the womb when he was born and we dedicate him rededicate him a lot uh not every day we don't you know 
technically rededicate him every day, but you know, when we think about it. Oh boy. And the crib. Do we oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, we never had a crib for him. Again, you know, oh, you have to buy all this furniture. You have to buy. It. No, you don't. No, you don't. Um, you can do things much cheaper, and a lot of times it's better for him. We took a large cardboard box, put a mattress, little little foam, you know, pretty thick foam in it, and um, you know, spongy foam. No, I'm not talking about styrofoam. And uh, uh, down comforter and things, and, and he slept in that for a long time. Um, our clock over there, we bought a, a used mantle clock, an older one, like an antique one. Uh, again, nothing real expensive, but just the sound of the click, 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 click. click. And we'd put him right, right in front of that mantle clock. It's right up, up on the shelf up above him. He could never reach it way up there, but you know, and just the sound like tick, 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 and it, he'd go just out like that. Uh, no problem sleeping. Uh, again, try that if you have a clock or something like that. Um, we download it off the internet. They have these. You get a little MP3 player, SanDisk or whatever, and you can get MP3 of uh, crickets, nighttime crickets, just the sound of woods at night with crickets chirping. And we'll do that sometimes. Even still, we do that. It helps us sleep. <laughs> but it, it puts him out. And um, so uh, that in the audio else. Bible at night. And yeah, we'll do that sometimes. That was kind of hard at first. He didn't really go too good with the audio Bible. He'd kind of fuss a bit. But he's getting more and more used to it. We'll do it occasionally. Just kind of get him used to hearing God's word. But what about spoken. children who are a little bit older than the little man who know who are learning how to read and they're like... And yeah, they, they'll get... A little, children, I mean, attention spans of children is not very good sometimes. And that's just the way they are. Uh, Oliver, thank you for demonstrating that for us. Um, but, you know teaching them the Bible. Uh, go, go ahead and take a little bit of a walk. That calms him. But um, teaching a child the Bible, uh, you know, uh, we've been asked about that. And um, we do have some experience now. We can actually <laughs> speak from personal experience. Uh, there's different ways to do it. Um, you can give them something that they can look at, something that's quiet, that they can sit there and they can hold it in their hands and look at it and things like that while they're listening. Um, another good way to do it would be to, you know, I'll just pick a passage here. Philippians chapter 4, uh, you'd say that, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. That's the way I normally would read, but if you're reading to a child, you can say, now listen, here's how it goes. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It's talking about Jesus. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Remember we showed you about Jesus dying on the cross? Being made conformable unto his death. Jesus died to pay for your sins, Oliver. You know, did you know that? <laughs> You're smiling, that's good. So, you know, that's that's a way. I mean, there's there's different ways. I would avoid uh, Bible story books because it's putting images in the child's mind. And some of the images are like, you know, what in the world? And a lot of these children's uh, Bible story books too. They'll they'll twist scriptural stories. You know? And they're usually not based on the King James Bible. Right. So that's why I say avoid those, especially avoid stuff like Veggie Tales and things. I mean, give me a break. That's really yeah. bad. Um. One last thing about the before delivery thing. Uh, the nine months leading up to your delivery. Um, unless, like in my case, it was about halfway through being with child that we finally learned from the Lord that I was with child. So it was kind of a surprise. But um, if you know that you're with child and you're not doing a pregnancy test, we didn't do that, um, you know, to see if you're with child or not, um, you're gonna, after you start getting enough weight that it kind of affects how you walk, you end up waddling, so to speak, after a while. Um, a great way to kind of relieve the, the back pain and the pressure of the developing child, you know, Anya is to sleep on your side throughout the night, you know, and don't get this special body pillow that's ergonomically designed for, you know, women who are, who are with child or something. Just use extra pillows. Get extra pillows, you know, and position them in a way that is comfortable for you throughout the night. And sleeping on your side is a great way to, you know, decrease that back pain that back pressure mm -hmm. from the developing child yeah and see take him for a little walk and see the whole thing is um the other thing and that is 
this was our first child. Um, I was uh, 39 when we had Oliver. She was 32. And uh, no, actually, she would have been 31 at the time because her birthdays, you know, comes after when Oliver was born. And so uh, we we're both older, you know, and, uh, you know, just doing the research and everything going through it the first time. Now it's like if the Lord gives us another child, we're going to be ready. We're, we know what to do and we're going to try new things. And the uh, that's that's the life of a Christian is trying new things, experimenting. Reading your Bible, studying your Bible, saying, okay, Lord, you know, how does this work? What does this work? You know, trying different herbal things and, and whatever else. Evening uh, primrose oil is what we didn't do this time. And as a result, you know, if you take, if you use evening primrose oil during the last two months, you know, during the last two months of your time of being with child before delivery, it'll actually prevent your muscles from tearing. And as a result what? of not using that, I ended up with a second degree tear. Perennial tear. Yeah. Um, so, and again, uh, take him, keep, keep going so, until he calms down a little bit. Um, again, you know, we're not going to get into the details of that, but uh, it's, uh, we healed it uh, again through prayer. We'll give the Lord credit. It was really up to him, but um, no suturing. Uh, that can be done and whatever else, but uh, you can also use raw honey, um, unpasteurized honey, raw, locally grown honey. And uh, there's seedweed. I heard that that works pretty good too. But uh, we used raw honey. We used an herbal sitz bath. Uh, it's uh, basically different herbs. Again, not going to get into all the thing there. You can look that up. Herbal sitz bath, S I T Z bath. And uh, we used a combination of those two. And I just simply said, okay, no squatting down to do things and whatever. You just stay in bed. I'll cook for a while. I'll take care of things. I'll whatever. Thanks, and uh, yeah, you know, and and. Um, you don't do many, you know, moving your legs around a lot that would reopen things. And the Lord healed her uh, completely without suturing. So, again, a lot of this stuff, you know, what did women do for thousands of years? Why can't we do it today? Is the Bible true or is it not? You know, see, that's, that's the whole issue here. Um, can God get you through this stuff? Yes, he can. Absolutely. You do not have to feel like, oh, what, you know, because I know the big argument against the whole thing of of uh, not having insurance. They say, okay, well, you might not be in an accident, but what do you do if you have a child? Because that's an emergency procedure. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, actually, it's a very, very wonderful time. It's, it's uh, I mean, my whole life changed. Keep walking around with him. He loves it. If, if, uh, if we had more time, you'd take him for, we call it Vroom Vroom Ride. He loves that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a beautiful time. It changed my life. It's changed my wife's life. It's uh, made our marriage much stronger. Um, made our work, walk with the Lord much stronger. Because we can see that doing things God's way, it works. You know? And... Uh, so I think that's going to be it. That's all we're going to say. This is the big announcement. I know it's probably shocked quite a few people. Now you don't want to be down playing either, do you? <laughs> uh, yeah, very interesting. Tell you a little, uh, another little interesting story, just to kind of explain again some of my uh, sleepy moments with my preaching in the last year. Um, you know. Having a child at my age, my first child, is, is uh, very challenging. And I remember this one time, um, it was right after she, you know, right after Oliver was born and, and uh, she was in bed upstairs and everything. And, and I remember he had a messy diaper, a number two variety. And I remember uh, I was like, okay, you know, I mean, we, we hadn't been sleeping very good. I'm like, I'll go change him. So I'm like carrying little Oliver downstairs, put him you know, on the changing pad, and, and I'm, you know, taking his diaper off, cleaning him all up and everything, and totally changed. I'm like, oh, okay, I can finally get back up here to sleep. I turn, I walk, I might have been two steps out of the bathroom, and he goes, Pow! I hear him doing another one. I'm like, oh. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, turn around, go back in, clean him up again, you know, and everything, and, and uh, get him totally clean, and I'm like, there's no way. I mean, both of these were huge number two, you know. And I'm just like, he's empty. He's done. I can get back to sleep. Get out of the bathroom walking. I'm in the hallway. 
before we go up the steps. Again, just like, <laughs> if you're a parent, I'm sure you're nodding your head going, yeah, you know. Uh, incredible it's quite the experience um, and it, and what a way to start it out to actually have the child at home and uh, you say why did you wait so long to tell people well because we wanted to show people it can be done done God's way if we'd come out and said my wife is gonna have a baby it had been like you gotta get insurance you gotta have this you gotta have that um, well we had a baby well, you know, you got to do it. We could get all this advice and stuff. And it's not that we're against advice, but it just, we wanted to show, you know, when I got called into the ministry, as I said at the very beginning of this video, I wanted to do things God's way. And I wanted to show that you can live by this book. That's why we did it this way. Um, you know, I hope I've demonstrated that. Uh, that's why we kept it secret for such a long time, because... We want to show people God's word is true. God's word is relevant to today. Uh, you can live according to scripture. So, um, I hopefully, hopefully that explains it. Um, again, I'm I. Uh, there has been a reason for me being a bit negligent in some of my preaching in the last year, and uh, it's been for good calls, very good calls. Uh, God gave us a son, and I just. I'm very thankful for that. And we look forward to the next one. And the next one is going to be born at home. And you say, well, what happens if something bad happens to your wife? What happens if... Some... That's in the Lord's hands. Just as the first birth was in the Lord's hands. Uh, all glory goes to the Lord. Okay? If you're somehow not saved and you've watched this whole thing, again, I apologize for some of the chaotic thing. He's usually very quiet, but I don't think he likes being on video, no. which is fine. But, um, you know, if you're not saved... I hope that you've learned some good ideas here with how to have a child at home. Uh, certainly you can contact us through our P.O. box, you know, and we'll tell you what we can. Um, but I highly recommend just staying away from the hospitals. Uh, you know, it's not even just a disdain for some of the way things are done in there, the techniques and whatever else. Um, it's the whole system, the vaccination and it's a death cult in there and it just it's really 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 bad um i've had bad experiences my wife has had bad experiences i know people have had major bad experiences i mean they're just killing people right and left and that's why i'm saying you know the times that are coming people need to start getting away from the medical establishment get away from the whole hospital thing take your health take control of your health um read the bible study the bible if you're not saved get saved good night <laughs> you know you can know god the god of heaven you can know him personally he wrote down an incredible book of instructions of truth sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth the bible says in john 17 17 this book is absolute truth and it is very relevant to today so that will be it please keep all three of us in your prayers. Amen. We can finally tell people now. I, again, we'd be doing videos. I'd be doing videos, and he'd like he'd cry or something upstairs when he's getting up from his nap, and I'd be like, "Ah, nuts!" You know, and I'd try to cut that part of the audio out or whatever else. Now, if you hear babies crying or a baby crying, right? It's Oliver. It's our little boy, Ollie. Oliver yeah. James. Excuse me, I keep saying Ollie. We're, you know, Oliver James. Yeah. It's Oliver. So there's no nickname. You can't shorten it. It's just Oliver. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to... After you know. Oliver Cromwell. Oh, yeah. I forgot to say that. Uh, who we named him after. Um, we wanted him to grow up... Uh, you know, you can name him Bible names and things like that. But we really wanted him to grow up uh, and understand the battle that goes on between, you know, the Catholics and those that are not Catholic. And uh, two men that I greatly admire in my you know, studies and things of church history... Oliver Cromwell, and don't bother writing that he had his issues and stuff. I know he had his issues, okay? But he stood against Roman Catholicism and fought against Roman Catholicism. And he has a book of his, you know, well, written book. And actually, his letter's down there, too, so he has a lot of good thoughts. But uh, Oliver Cromwell, that's where the Oliver came from, and, of course, King James. Uh, James is a Bible word, but also King James, the King James Bible. That's why I put KJV on the front of this one so you can tell it what it is so Oliver James Denlinger there he is uh, 
Please keep all three of us in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will continue to come out with more videos. As he's getting older now, I'm able to get to more studies and things like that too. So um, just a real blessing. Mm -hmm. So that is it. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you too to everybody that's, that donates to the ministry. We really appreciate that. Again, I try to say that periodically just to keep that in people's minds. Uh, God has been really amazing to provide for us. Uh, we do things, again, uh, we're not trying to be a burden on anybody. You know, we live a very, very, very good life. We don't think we're starving or we're having a hard time. I'm not providing for my wife. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. I don't you know, ask much. And the Lord knows I'm speaking truth when I say that. Yeah. And, you know, we both are in ministry. Okay. My wife is going to be doing more and more videos for Christian ladies out there. And for women in general, you know, saved and lost. I mean, we want to see women getting saved. And um, I, of course, I've been in ministry for seven years now. And uh, that's why we do what we do. And uh, we don't want to be a financial burden on anybody. And we want to be pioneers. You know, we want to, we want to be able to show you this stuff works. You know, again, I didn't, I didn't really say much about this, but uh, another thing, I'm, we, you know, we've written notes here. We have uh, my wife's written notes. Um, another thing I didn't mention, uh, wool soaker. Okay, early on we were buying knitted ones, like hand, like crocheted, essentially, and uh, they were okay when he was very, very little, but they tended to leak as he got a little bit older. So it was like, eh, I'd stay away from the knitted ones, even though they were pure wool. Still had the moisture wicking thing and all that. Good, but not as good as the boiled wool. So we learned. We're still learning. And, you know, my wife is going to be sharing a lot of this stuff for ladies. You know, we did this video together to announce the birth of our son. And, uh, but my wife will be bringing more things out. Advice for mothers, advice for Christian ladies. Yes. Um, as time goes by. And again, you know, uh, the study that she did on witchcraft, uh, the Lord prompted her to do that because understanding what witchcraft is is very important when you're raising a child, yes. when you have a little boy, because there's so much out there that's tied back to witchcraft that's designed to hurt children. Mm -hmm. So, but I've said enough. We got to get these lights off and get little man here some food or something. I don't know. Maybe an ATV ride. <laughs> so that is going to be it. Again, thank you to everybody out there for praying for us. It uh, means a whole lot. So that is it. Thank you for watching.